Welcome back to Plan B on YouTube. Today we discuss Bitcoin markets using these seven charts. Bitcoin stock to flow model, the market cycle model, relative strength index, 200 week moving average, Bitcoin realized price, realized return, and Bitcoin in profit. So the first chart, Bitcoin stock to flow model. Uh, Bitcoin closed this month a bit above 60k. And that's 10k below last month, uh, actually completely erasing last month's 10k gain. Um, so maybe the 70k of last month was a bit too much. There was ETF FOMO and of course there was a never seen before all-time high before the halving and all that. So despite this a bit lower uh, closing price this month, Bitcoin is still... 36% up year to date. And also Bitcoin is at the halving because this month is the last uh, blue dot um, because it's month zero here. And from next month, May, we will count down again to the next halving in 2028. But this month is the last blue dot and every blue dot, last blue dot, every halving has been at this gray stock to flow model price. So that's very nice. Um, also the average price is something that we can calculate at the moment. It's 34,000 and that's a little below of course the uh, 55,000 that the 2019 original stock to flow model predicted. But it's ballpark okay. It's the same order of magnitude and and don't forget in 2019 the bitcoin price was below 4000 so um, also note that the average bitcoin price was above the stock to flow model price in the cycle before the last cycle the 2016 2020 cycle so um, i updated the model uh, parameters did not change much uh, 2024 2028 target is still around 500k on average so uh, also note that the error always goes down um, after the halving so there is a halving the model value goes up and it of course it takes some time the bitcoin price has a lag to catch up with the model value it's Every halving, it's the same. It will also be true this halving, in my opinion. So we see the error already going down. It will go down again because the price will not be 500k, of course, uh, in May. It will slowly over the months uh, go into the, that model price. So what's next for 2024? I repeat the same as last video. It is inevitable that we reach... 100k in my opinion because minor revenue has to recover and mining revenue because of the halving did half um, um, all the miners the entire industry has seen its revenue drop by 50 percent and it has to recover and usually last three halvings it did recover within four to eight months so that's well within this year, 2024. And the only way for mining revenue to recover is that price doubles. So estimating from current price of 60K, we should be well above 100K this year. Then 2025, I think the top will be then because historically the top of the bull market after the, uh, has been after the halving and, and w about one year, one and a half year after the halving. So that's, that brings us in 2025. And the big question, of course, is um, will the price follow diminishing returns? Um, and I think a price of, well, around 200K for the top uh, will be in line with diminishing returns or Will price indeed follow the stock to flow model again? And will there be exponential returns again? 
you know my answer. I think stock to flow is still valid. I think we will have exponential returns at least until 50% adoption. Um, and we're now at, well, uh, somewhere between 1% and 10%. Uh, so uh, far away from that 50% adoption, I think exponential returns are what we're going to see. Okay, next chart. The Bitcoin market cycle. And everybody was watching for that red dot. If it would turn to yellow, it did not. So the, uh, the bull market continues. I know the emotions are very different. I know some think the bull market's over uh, already, but it, that's exactly why we use models to fight against emotions and the on-chain transactions that this market cycle indicator is based on, the on-chain transactions signal that we are still in a bull market despite this little dip. And note, by the way, that here is a dip as well. Here is a dip as well. It's very similar. Here is a dip. Here's a dip. So red doesn't mean there won't be dips. In fact, 25% uh, dips are quite normal in a bull market. So better get used to it. There might be more. Uh, but th the good thing is red will continue, in my opinion. Next chart. Let's go to the technical indicators. RSI. Last time we had a very high RSI of 77 and this month, last month, it dropped to 66. It normalized, if you will, because we were talking here about, well, is this normal? It's the highest. Uh, it could be normalizing. It could be a new normal. But okay, so it normalized, and it's now at the level of the last couple of halvings. So this is the 2012 halving, the 2016 halving, and the 2020 halving was, of course, uh, below. So we're above the 2020 halving uh, levels in in RSI and well this is the the last blue dot the next dot the May dot will be red so in fact we haven't even started yet in my opinion so I think that the red dots that we will see uh, starting from May the red dots will be higher than the blue dots so the red RSI will be higher than the blue RSI which means uh, we will see RSI's well above 80, like we have seen in the previous bull markets. And that means large price increases. RZ, RZ, RSI 80 is really absolute steep price increases in a, a real bull market. So I think we're, um, we still have that in front of us. If we look at the 200-week moving average, uh, nothing much happened. It it increased a little, as it all as the 200-week moving average always does, and it's now at at 34,000. So you can see that as a very conservative floor. But in bull markets, uh, it's indeed very conservative. In bear markets, it might touch or even go below the 200-week moving average. But in bull markets, we will go uh, far higher. And I think. Uh, the 200 week moving average is maybe not, not very interesting. This chart, the realized price, is very interesting. And I tell you why. The realized price, which is basically the cost price of Bitcoin, all the Bitcoins, all the 19.6 million Bitcoins, weighted against their last transacted price, is now, um, it's now, it's now $29,000. And the two-year realized price is $45,000. It's a little bit higher than last month, but it's plateauing a little bit. Same is true for the five-month um, uh, realized price. It's at 60 k right now. And the very interesting thing is that that is a huge support level in bull markets. So dips, like we, see, like we were seeing last month, usually bounce on the five-month realized price, the short-term hodler also known as. And we can see that here in 2020, it was a bull market. It dropped till the five-month realized price. And you can also see the plateau in the realized price and the two-year realized price. You can see it here in 2017, 
here in 2017, that little dip dipped until the light blue five month realized price and then went up again. I think that's what we're going to see as well. And the same happened in, in 2012, right? Here, puff, it goes to the, the light blue line and then resumes the bull, the bull market. I think that's the exact same situation that we're in right now. Realized price and now realized return. Realized return is still positive, 7%. So April sellers got 7% return. And the data suggests that the sellers are taking profit and that uh, it's not the ETF weak hands that sold. Uh, taking profit in a bull market is a very logical thing to do, especially for traditional finance people. 7% uh, is a lot in um, in a couple of months in traditional finance terms. So don't blame them uh, sometimes, and especially if you're new to the market, to the Bitcoin market, you want to see if, if the profits are real and you want to take the profit out and, 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 uh, and then reinvest it. That's what I think is going to happen. Bitcoin in profit also dropped a bit, of course. It's not 100% anymore because the buyers at 70K are in loss. And um, so 12% so is in loss right now. And that's yellow. And we could probably compare that a little bit to what happened in 2020 here. Red, red, yellow, and then the bull market resumes. Or in 2012, we see a beginning of the bull market and then yellow and then uh, second start. I don't think we can compare it to 2013 which was after a 10K, and then uh, the bull market continued to do another 10K, uh, or um, with 2019, when there was a very early bull market a year, it, or it seemed to be a very early bull market a year before the halving. That was just too early. We're now at the halving, so I think it's more like 2020 and 2012, but time will tell. Okay, please subscribe to this channel because it really helps me get the content to more people. Thank you for watching.